Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi this is Dr Hari Priya from Sri Ramachandra Medical College and Research Institute Porur Chennai The topic is on histology of general connective tissue So all of you need to know about the components classification ultrastructure and clinical correlation of the general connective tissue So this is a clinical scenario which will be discussed at the end being taller than average for his or her age and family arms that are disproportionately long compared to his or her height unusually long thin spider like fingers and toes chest that are either pushed outward or caved inward joints including the knees that can flex backward to an unusual degree flat feet very little fat beneath the skin a high arched palate dislocation of the lens of the eye progressive enlargement of the iota connective tissue is the term applied to tissues which provide general structure mechanical strength space filling physical and metabolic support for more specialized tissues it is derived from the embryonic mesoderm or in the head region largely from the neural crest connective tissue plays several important roles structural role so that's done by the ordinary types which are distributed widely the special skeletal types namely cartilage and bone the hemolymphoid tissues which consists of cells of the blood lymphoid tissue and their precursors a defensive role which has a cellular basis a trophic and morphogenetic roles in organizing and influencing the growth and differentiation of surrounding tissues the components of the connective tissue include the cells and the extracellular matrix the cells are derived from hemal tissue of the bone marrow or from lymphoid tissue reaching the connective tissues via the circulating blood the extracellular matrix it consists of the fibers and an amorphous ground substance the connective tissue is conspicuous in some regions and scanty in others basically we have two types the general connective tissue which will be discussed today and the more specialized connective tissues which we dealt with separately coming to the cellular component of the connective tissues we have two types the resident cell population and the fluctuating cell population the resident uh, cell population includes the fibroblasts adipocytes persistent mesenchymal stem cells the fluctuating cell population of immigrant wandering cells with defensive functions which include the macrophages the lymphocytes mast cells neutrophils and the eosinophils so these are all the cells of the connective tissue a little more about the fibroblasts so they are numerous and are flattened have irregular outline with branching processes fusiform or spindle in shape they synthesize most of the extracellular matrix and are engaged in synthesis and secretion of proteins so they play a very important role the nuclei they are large active or euchromatic In young cells the cytoplasm is abundant and basophilic in old and inactive fibroblasts there's sparse cytoplasm and flattened nucleus in active fibroblasts the mitochondria are more the fibroblasts are adherent to the fibers which they lay down in lymphoid tissue the fibroblasts form fibrocellular network and reticulin fibers called reticular tissue in spleen the fibroblasts are called reticular cells the fibroblasts are active during own repair multiplying and laying down a fibrous matrix which becomes invaded by numerous blood vessels the contraction of a own is caused by shortening of specialized contractile fibroblasts called as the myofibroblasts the fibroblast activity is influenced by steroid hormone levels dietary contact and mechanical stress in vitamin c deficiency there's impairment of collagen formation the clinical correlation repair with fibrosis so following damage to the cells and tissues there's an inflammatory reaction 
which is responsible for eliminating the damaging agent and clearing away dead tissue. There is a local proliferation of mesenchymal cells to form fibroblasts and myofibroblasts. These grow out to replace the area of tissue damage and there is florid growth of new capillary blood vessels called granulation tissue. The fibroblasts and myofibroblasts secrete extracellular matrix and replace the damaged area with fibrocollagenous material that is the collagenous scar. This has been called healing by repair and often allows good function but is better regarded as fibrosis and scarring as it does not restore the tissue to normal. So, this is a H&E stained uh, slide of adipose tissue to show you the adipocytes. So, the adipocytes they occur singly or in groups in many but not in all connective tissues but is numerous in the adipose tissue. Each cell it consists of a peripheral rim of cytoplasm in which the nucleus is embedded surrounding a single large globule of fat. The macrophages, they basically of two types. We have the stationary or the fixed macrophages and the nomadic macrophages. Ultrastructurally, the macrophages contain numerous lysosomes which digest ingested materials. The inert materials such as small particles of carbon or metals may also be taken up a quality useful in demonstrating macrophages histologically. The functional correlation, it, they, are, they are the immunological aspects of uh, defense. The properties are similar to circulating monocytes, the alveolar macro, uh, phagocytes in the lungs, the literal phagocytes in the lymph nodes, spleen and bone marrow, the CUFA cells of the liver, Langerhans cells of the epidermis, dendritic and interdigitating cells of the lymphoid tissue. Macrophages are motile when grouped around a foreign body. They may also fuse together to form syncytial giant cells and epithelioid cells. Coming to lymphocytes, they are numerous in pathological states. They are small cells with rounded, highly heterochromatic or often deeply indented nuclei. The B lymphocytes originate in the bone marrow. The T lymphocytes are also formed in the bone marrow, then the thymus before passing into the peripheral lymphoid system. The functions of the T lymphocytes include recognition and destruction of virus infected cells, tumor cells, etc. and they modulate the B lymphocytes. The mast cells, they are important defensive cells. They are found numerous in uh, the blood vessels and nerves. The ultrastructure, they are round or oval with many phyllopodia. The nucleus is centrally placed, small, surrounded by large numbers of prominent vesicles with heterogeneous content. The mast cell granules can initiate and amplify a great range of defensive responses associated with inflammation. The major granule components are the proteoglycan, heparin, histamine, tryptase, etc. The neutrophils and eosinophils, so they are the immigrant cells from the circulation. They are present in small numbers but increase in infected tissues where they are important components of the cellular defense. The neutrophils are highly phagocytic towards bacteria while functions of neutrophils are less well understood. The pigment cells also called as the melanocytes. So, they are found in the dermis of skin in iris and choroid of the eye. Some cells can synthesize melanin and are called melanocytes while many engulf it after its release from the melanocytes being unable to synthesize it. So, they are called chromatophores. They stellate in form. They represent modified fibroblasts with long processes and numerous dark brown or black granules. Their function is to prevent light from reaching the adjacent cells. Clinical correlation, uh, the genetic changes in the cells lead them to undergo <coughs> poorly regulated growth called tumors or neoplasm. Benign when the tumors are confined to the body part or malignant when there is loss of growth control and cells invade locally or spread widely. 
An abnormal growth of adipocytes in a benign tumor is called as a lipoma. Malignant tumors are liposarcomas. Benign tumors of the fibroblasts are fibromas and malignant ones are called fibrosarcomas. So to summarize, so the components of the connective tissue include cells and the extracellular matrix. So we've seen about all the cells of the connective tissue. So they are divided into two populations, the resident cell population and the fluctuating cell population. So the resident cell population includes the fibroblasts, the adipocytes, the macrophages, the mast cells and the pigmented cells and the adult stem cells. The fluctuating cell population includes lymphocytes, plasma cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils and monocytes. Now we are going to look <coughs> into the extracellular matrix which contains the fibers and the intra intercellular ground substance. So the extracellular matrix it contains fibers and ground substance. The extracellular matrix has insoluble protein fibrils and soluble complexes which is the ground substance. So it maintains the shape of different components of the body. It provides the physicochemical environment of the cells embedded in it. The extracellular matrix is ultimately involved in all aspects of cell metabolism, growth, reproduction and movement. The insoluble protein fibrils are of two types, the collagen and the elastin. The collagen fibers, they resist pulling forces, whereas the elastin fibers, they provide a measure of resilience when it is present. The soluble complexes are long car carbohydrate chains linked to proteins, small filamentous proteins which perform cell matrix adhesion and matrix cell signaling. The proteins include fibronectin, laminin, myrosin and osteonectin in the bone. The soluble complexes form a stiff gel resisting compressive forces. So the collagen is the major fiber type seen. The function it provides tensile strength to resist pulling, stretching and tearing. The collagen is secreted into the extracellular matrix by fibroblasts in the form of a tropocollagen monomer. It consists of three polypeptide chains bound together to form a helical protein structure. At least 28 different types of collagen have now been delineated based on morphology, amino acid composition and physical properties. So we can see the three polypeptide chains of the collagen molecule here forming a triple, triple uh, helix. So this is the structure of collagen. The fibrilla collagens, so the type 1 is most abundant, it is the constituent of the dermis, fasciae, bone, tendons, ligaments, blood vessels and sclera of the eyeball. The type 2 variety is seen in hyaline cartilage and the vitreous body. The type 3 in delicate branched reticular supporting meshwork seen in cellular tissues like liver, bone marrow and lymphoid organ, organs. The type 4 is seen in the basement membranes. The type 7, it forms the anchoring fibrils that link extracellular matrix to basement membrane. The remaining collagen types are present in various specialized situations. The elastic fibers, so they are less widely distributed than collagen. They are yellowish in color, branch and rejoin freely. Usually thinner than the collagen fibrils, they are all, although they can be thick, example in the ligamentum flower and ligamentum neoche. Unlike collagen, they show no banding pattern by extracellular matrix. They stain with orsine. Sometimes they appear as sheets in the elastic laminae of the aortic wall. The elastin rich structures, they stretch easily with almost perfect recoil. So, so this is the, uh, the elastic fibers seen a section of elastic artery. So, so this is the endothelium, the tunica media, intima, the tunica media and the adventitia. So all these are the elastic fibers. The elastic fibers are, see, are fine, dark, relatively straight fibers uh, uh, seen here in a whole mount preparation of mesentery stained for elastin. 
The wavy bands are the collagen bundles and oval gray nuclei are mainly of the fibroblasts. The unstretched fibers, they show little or no bifringence but become strongly bifringent on stretching. The reticulin fibers, so these are the reticular fibers, the type 3 collagen, the reticulin demonstrated by silver staining in a human liver forming a delicate meshwork. So, they are seen as fine branching and anastomosing reticulin fibers. They form the supporting framework of many endocrine glands, kidney and the lymphoreticular tissue, lympho lymph node and spleen. They associate with the basal lamina and are found next to collagen bundles. The reticulin, it takes up silver salt strongly. The reticulin shows a banding pattern similar to that of the fibrillar collagens and is chemically collagenous, possibly rich in type 3 collagen. The disorders of collagen. Scurvy is due to the defective collagen formation from lack of vitamin C which results in loose teeth, skin hemorrhages and death. Small hemorrhages around the skin, hair follicles are an early sign. There are several inherited diseases caused by mutations in genes coding for type 1 and 3 collagen. The effects are reduced. Uh, tensile strength in supporting tissues leading to abnormal tissue laxity or susceptibility to injury. Erlo-Danlos syndrome is characterized by abnormal skin laxity and hypermobility of joints. Coming to the ground substance, so this is an amorphous transparent material with the physical character of a semi-solid gel. It's a mixture of glycoproteins and complex carbohydrates with profound water binding ability. The carbohydrates are long unbranched polysaccharide chains with two sugar derivatives usually uronic and an amino acid giving rise to the term glycosaminoglycan. So this is a proteoglycan monomer, you can see the coprotein there. That is the chondroitin sulphate and the keratin sulphate, they are all glycosaminoglycans which gives a bottle brush appearance. So, this is the link protein with the proteoglycan units and the entire thing forms the uh, <coughs> molecule here. So, this is the collagen fibril, the proteoglycan. So, this is the molecular organization of ground substance. So, other glycosaminoglycans are chondroitin 4 sulphate, chondroitin 6 sulphate dermatin sulphate and keratin sulphate. The glycosaminoglycans are linked to proteoglycans like the perlican, the syndican, decarin, lumican and the agrican. The structural glycoproteins are the fibrillin and the fibronectin. They are important in the ground substance. The fibronectin it controls the deposition and orientation of collagen in the extracellular matrix. The integrins are transmembrane protein complexes which act as cell adhesion molecules. They form a part of a specialized layer of extracellular matrix called the basement membrane. So, the functions of the basement membrane include providing physical binding of the epithelium to the underlying tissue and physical support, control of epithelial growth and differentiation, they permit the flow of nutrients and metabolites and regulate permeability. So, what about the disorders of the basement membrane? So, it is involved in several disease processes. So, in renal function, if the glomerular basement membrane becomes abnormal, then the renal function is impaired. In diabetes mellitus, there is thickening of the glomerular basement membrane which becomes abnormally permeable to proteins. In cancer, the epithelial tissues grow and regenerate but are separated from the support tissues by a basement membrane. So, mutations in the epithelial cells lead to abnormal growth which is neoplasia. A malignant tumor it spreads because cancer cells secrete factors that destroy the basement membrane allowing cells to grow into the extracellular matrix. In genetic diseases, mutations in genes coding for components of the basement membrane have been shown in Alport disease, congenital muscular dystrophy and junctional epidermolysis bullosa. Uh, autoimmune diseases like in good pasture syndrome, autoantibodies are produced which target a component of the basement membrane 
common to glomeruli and lung leading to renal and lung disease. So to summarize, the components of the connective tissue include the cells and the extracellular matrix. So cells, there are of two types, the resident cells and the fluctuating cells. The extracellular matrix includes the fibrous, uh, the matrix fibers and the intercellular ground substance. The fibers include the collagen fibers, reticular fibers and the elastic fibers. The intercellular ground substance, so we saw the proteoglycans, the glycoproteins and the glycosaminoglycans. So to summarize, so the matrix fibers include the collagen fibers and the elastic fibers, function, strength and structure and stretch and elasticity. So ground substance, so we saw the glycosaminoglycans, so they are basically water binding gel. They provide volume, structure and interact with the supporting cells, epithelial cells, blood vessels and immune cells. The structural glycoproteins, the function, it binds and interacts with many connective tissue molecular components. The basement membrane, it is the interface between the cells, uh, interface of the cells with the connective tissue. The function, specialized structures are formed where epithelia and other cells meet connective tissue matrix, binds the epithelial cells to the connective tissue matrix. Now coming to the classification of the connective tissue, so we have the loose connective tissue and the dense connective tissue. So the loose and the dense terms refer to the amount of collagen present. So, so we saw the uh, uh, general connective tissue which is divided into embryonic connective tissue and the adult connective tissue. So the embryonic connective tissue is again divided into mesenchyme and the mucoid connective tissue. The adult connective tissue we will see the loo uh, loose connective tissue and the dense connective tissue. The dense connective tissue is again divided into dense irregular and uh, a dense irregular and dense regular connective tissue. So these are the specialized varieties: the cartilage, bone, uh, blood, and adipose. So we will uh, include only adipose tissue. So the loose connective tissue, which is the loose areolar tissue, so it forms a layer beneath the epithelial lining of many organs and filling spaces between fibers of muscle and nerves. It is also called areolar tissue. It contains cells, fibers and ground substance in roughly equal parts. The fibroblasts are numerous. The collagen fibers, they predominate but elastic and reticular fibers are also present. So loose areolar tissue has a delicate consistency and is flexible. So this is a slide showing you the loose areolar tissue, the collagen fibers, the elastic fibers, the fibroblasts and lymphocytes. Coming to dense connective tissue, the dense connective tissue has similar components as loose connective tissue with fewer cells, mostly fibroblasts and a clear predominance of bundle type 1 collagen fibers over the ground substance. The abundance of collagen here protects organs and strengthens them structurally. The dense regular connective tissue, it consists mostly of type 1 collagen fibers and fibroblasts aligned in parallel for great resistance to prolonged or repeated stresses from the same direction. Examples, so the flexible tendons which are the cords connecting the muscles to bones, the aponeurosis, ligaments, bands or sheaths that hold together components of the skeletal system. So this is a tendon, so this is a, a transverse section of tendon, the dense regular connective tissue in a tendon, the thick parallel bundles of type 1 collagen, here stained pink to give tendon its white color in life, so this is a transverse section of tendon. So this is a longitudinal section of tendon and a H&E stained slide. The elongated nuclei or the inactive fibroblasts are seen within the collagen bundles. So you can see the nuclei or the fibroblasts and the collagen fibers. So this is a slide of tendon. The clinical correlation is tendonitis, that is overuse of the tendon. The muscle units can result in tendonitis characterized by inflammation of the tendons and their attachments to muscle. The common locations are the elbow the Achilles tendon of the heel and the shoulder rotator cuff. This is 
dense irregular connective tissue. So, so in uh, dense irregular connective tissue, the bundles of collagen fibers they appear randomly interwoven with no definite orientation. The tough uh, three-dimensional collagen network it provides resistance to stress from all directions. So, the example is deep dermis layer of the skin and capsules around most organs. So, this is dense irregular connective tissue. The reticular tissue. So, this is characterized by abundant fibers of type 3 collagen forming a delicate network that supports various types of cells also known as reticulin and is produced by modified fibroblasts often called reticular cells that remain associated with and partially cover the fibers. They provide a framework for the cells in hemopoietic tissue and some lymphoid organs, the bone marrow, lymph nodes and spleen. So, these are the reticular fibers forming a network in the liver. The white spaces represent the sinusoids. The embryonic connective tissue. So, mesoderm it gives rise to the embryonic connective tissue. There are two subtypes. So, we have the mesenchyme and the mucous connective tissue. So, the mesenchyme it is found in the embryo. It consists of mesenchymal cells. The mesenchymal cells are small spindle shaped with fine cytoplasmic processes. The space between mesenchymal cells is occupied by ground substance reticular fibers and collagen fibers. The processes of adjacent mesenchymal cells are connected with each other by gap junctions. The mucoid tissue. So, this is the H&E stain size slide of mucoid tissue. The mucoid connective tissue is the principal component of the fetal umbilical cord where it is referred to as Watten's jelly. With abundant ground substance composed chiefly of hyaluron, Mucoid tissue is gelatinous with sparse collagen fibers and scattered fibroblasts. So, this is a transverse section of the umbilical cord showing the umbilical arteries, the umbilical vein, the Watten's jelly. So, included among the fibroblastic cells are many mesenchymal stem cells which are being studied for their potential in regenerative medicine. Mucoid connective tissue is similar to the tissue found in vitreous chambers of the eyes and pulp cavities of young teeth. The adipose tissue. So, the adipocytes. So, we already saw a slide of adipocytes. So, the adipocytes are cells specialized for storage of fat derived from mesenchyme. They are found in isolation or in small clusters. Fat is stored as triglycerides important in general metabolic processes acting as a store of substrate for the energy generating processes of all tissues. The adipocytes have receptors for insulin, glucocorticoids, growth hormone and noradrenaline that modulate, update and release fat. The protein messengers from the adipose tissue are called adipose cytokines. Two types of adipose tissue we have the white and the brown types. So, this is a slide of uh, adipose tissue. We can see the uh, honeycomb appearance of the adipocytes. So, the adipocyte with the peripheral nucleus and an empty appearance of the cytoplasm. So, that is characteristic of an adipocyte. The white adipose tissue is macroscopically pale yellow while brown has a darker brown tint. White variety forms 20 percent of the total body weight going up to 50 percent in obesity. Its role includes triglyceride storage and mobilization, structural fill, cont contributes to sculpting the body shape and outline, the thermal insulator and forms a part of the shock absorbing padding. The brown adipose tissue is found in small amounts in humans around adrenals, rich in mitochondria and specialized for generation of heat. The clinical correlation for adipose tissue. Metabolic syndrome, it comprises of abdominal obesity, the lipid changes in the blood, the high blood pressure, insulin resistance and a pro-inflammatory state. So, the rising prevalence of the metabolic syndrome is a major contribution to the development of the cardiovascular diseases such as atheroma linked to obesity. 
So, obesity has been linked to environmental and genetic factors. So, this is the diagnosis for the clinical scenario which was given in the first slide. So, the diagnosis is Marfan syndrome. It is an inherited disorder of the connective tissue that causes abnormalities in the eyes, bone, heart and blood vessels. It can be challenging to diagnose Marfan syndrome because many persons with it have few major features and no specific cellular or biochemical changes. The diagnosis is based on the person's cardiovascular, eye and bone symptoms and on the individual's family history. Treatment, although currently there is no cure for this condition, advancements in medical and surgical treatments have improved both the length and quality of life for those affected by it. So, to summarize, so this is the general connective tissue and the specialized connective tissue. The general connective tissue includes the embryonic connective tissue and the adult connective tissue. Embryonic connective tissue, two subtypes, the mesenchyme and the mucoid connective tissue. In adult connective tissue, we saw the loose connective tissue, the areola tissue and the dense connective tissue which includes the dense irregular and the dense regular. So, these are the different types of connected tissue. Thank you.